let's talk about how to protect your hearing. So we usually measure noise uh, using uh, decibels, uh, which um, essentially kind of um, it, it kind of aligns with the sensitivity of your ears to different noises. So I'm just going to read out a list of examples here so you can understand sort of the scale here. Uh, zero decibels is the quietest sound that a healthy human ear can hear. 140 decibels is the level at which noise causes pain for most people, um, but some people might find lower levels painful too. Um, about 40 decibels is a quiet library. 60 is ordinary spoken conversation. 85 is a blender. Uh, 88 is heavy traffic. Uh, 91 would be a pneumatic drill. Um, 97 would be an industrial fire alarm. A nightclub sits at about 100 decibels. Uh, and then a live gig or a concert usually sits at 110. And, you know, if you've got someone um, out front, that's basically you've got someone that's mixing uh, the audio and, you know, telling you what you hear, <laughs> often they'll have a little microphone that just sort of, or, you know, a little sort of uh, device that sort of is measuring how loud it is. I mean, a bunch of different places will have rules on how loud you're allowed to have it based on, you know, um, the sort of regulations that they've got for that building and for that area. Um, 130 decibels would be an airplane taking off 100 meters away. So, I mean, think about standing 100 meters from an airplane as it takes off. I mean, they're pretty loud. Um, and as I said, 140 would be um, where it causes pain for most people. 150 uh, is the Jubilee line going around a corner. Don't even. <laughs> honestly... <laughs> I, I need to wear noise cancelling headphones on the Jubilee line. Yeah. It's just, it's too much. I hate to bring it back. I, there's something that really, zero is not no noise. It is very specifically this, that annoys me as a, this, why, this, is, why is zero because not this scale, So this scale is based on human hearing. Are right. you annoyed by the fact that zero degrees is not no heat? Well, well depends no, on what. Because there is. Depends if you're in Kelvin. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There yeah. is a specific yeah. measurement to that and that can go into the negatives. Sound can't go into the negatives. They can't. They well, can't <laughs> take sound back out of oh, my ears. Oh, can it not? What well, my point with decibels is that it, it is based on it's based on human hearing, right? So it, that's like Ooh, saying that's so, like saying, well, you know, this is the same thing for Celsius mm. is uh, used for something different that Fahrenheit is used for generally, and Fahrenheit is used for something different than Kelvin. Kelvin is used for science when you want to measure from absolute zero. So can decibels go into the negatives for like animals that have more sensitive hearing than us and the sounds they can hear? I suppose degrees Celsius goes to negative 273 and it doesn't actually go any lower than that. So theoretically, yes, like Celsius, you could have a negative decibel and a, oh. and a lowest number of negative decibels is like it's, degrees yeah, 273. And, and then, then you get yeah. to whatever so, no sound yeah. is. You can have negative decibels, but that just means that it's sort of below... And bear in yeah. mind, you could probably tell from this scale that it's logarithmic, right? It's not a linear scale. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so negative decibels are sounds that are below the sort of just general what humans... the quiet sound that a human ear can hear, right? So... I guess it's weird to think about it as, because we're thinking about it as an absolute. Generally, when you think about measurements, you think about them as absolutes. This one is not. This one is based off of uh, an arbitrary reference point, which is human hearing, because yeah. that's what it's made for, you know, and that's what um, it, it's useful in that sense. There are other ways to measure the, I guess, the volume of sounds or, you know, sort of sound pressure. Mm. Um, but this is, this is the one we use for human hearing because it's specifically made to... <laughs> it's specifically built around human hearing, right? This might sound like a silly question, but I'm mm. not a scientist. So sounds. I vaguely understand that they're waves. You yeah. know, what makes a sound louder physically? Like what scientifically is a louder sound versus a quieter sound? So when we're measuring waves, it would be the amplitude. But when it comes to the actual sort of sound waves in the air, look, I mean, I know you know this. So what that would be would be the pressure, a pressure per unit of space, Yeah. Um, which is part of the definition of pressure. Oh, the <laughs> definition that yeah. defines itself. Yeah. So sound waves are sort of changes in, I guess, air pressure, right? That's the that's how those waves propagate, right? And the, the sort of pressure, the, the level of the pressure that's hitting your eardrums, that would be the amplitude. So, okay. I mean, if it's hitting with, an, with a higher pressure, that is sort of more force over... So pressure is force over area. So your eardrum is, this, is a consistent area. Mm -hmm. So when we say something is louder, that means it's essentially hitting your eardrum with more force, right? And that would be a louder sound because sounds are just waves in air, just vibrations in the air, which is... Just changes in air pressure hitting your eardrums. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And if it makes sense to me, I'm sure it makes sense to your audience because I'm a dum dum. <laughs> <laughs> so we've kind of spoken about the different levels of sound, and you know we've spoken about how that can damage your ears. 85 decibels is about the, the threshold for you know above that you're probably going to start to get some hearing damage over time. Um, if you listen to sounds under 85 decibels, 
they're safe to listen to. Uh, and you won't need to protect your ears. Um, but if it's going sort of above that, then you can start getting hearing damage. But obviously the exposure time guides, you can kind of think of it like radiation, right? Why do you think that's easier? Why do well, you think thinking about radiation is easier than sound? I don't know, because I, 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 I guess because I've... Like, looked into radiation, how it affects people. I did it in physics in high school. I don't know. My, my point is that um, it's not just the intensity; it's of it's also the sort of time that you've got to the, the, the sort of like the time that you're exposed to it. I mean, it says here that um, the sound intensity doubles with every increase of three decibels. As I said, it's it's a logarithmic scale. It's not linear. So every three decibels, that is double the intensity of of sound. Jesus. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, and so, you know, uh, heavy traffic doesn't apparently sound as twice as loud as a food blender, but it is twice as intense. And, you know, um, the exposure time, the safe exposure time uh, will obviously decrease as the intensity of the sound increases. So apparently um, for 85 decibels, that's up to eight hours a day. Um, and you're exposed to a lot of different sounds, it says, um, that are uh, 85 decibels or over throughout the day um, and all of that time adds up which is why I'm talking about it like radiation like you can go and get you know sort of a chest x-ray or you can get x-ray from the dentist and stuff but it all it, all that radiation exposure adds up and it can still cause damage sound we kind of think of it in the same way that if you have exposure to sort of sounds over a certain amount that all will add up to cause sort of hearing damage. Um, and apparently it says after 15 minutes of a nightclub, you're at risk of hearing damage. So if you go in for longer than 15 minutes, you can damage your ears. Yeah, and that's if you're not, that, so that's obviously this if you're not wearing. This is why I always leave after 49 minutes. <laughs> On the dot. <laughs> One, five, 15. Oh, oh wow, you've got, you've got oh, triple no. hearing yeah. damage. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and it's, it's, there's also, I, I find it, it says that there's uh, an easy way to tell if a noise is too loud because it's hard to tell when sounds are too loud because if you're feeling pain, your ears are already damaged. It's too late. Yeah. It's too late, yeah. Um, but one one sort of easy test is if you're talking to someone, you know, who's about um, up to uh, six feet away, you know, two meters away, and you have to raise your voice or shout for them to hear you, it's too loud. It's probably going to damage your ears, right? Mm. Not the shouting, the noise <laughs> that you're trying to shout over. Um, and you know, you can get you can get things that measure sort of the decibel level on your phone and whatnot. But again, those are not going to be super accurate. Generally, it's probably a good idea to understand the safe sound levels. You know, I think iPhones now tell you if the sound levels are dangerously high through your headphones and whatnot. Mm. You should probably try and pay attention to that stuff because, it, you know, it's not something, tinnitus isn't something that, you know, necessarily will always come on gradually. Sometimes it can just come on suddenly. And damaging your ears, it's not a joke. You should, pl you should kind of play it safe. So what you're saying is me and the boys go down the nightclub stand in a two meter radius circle or try to talk to someone mm. at the opposite end, do that for 13 minutes and then leave. Absolutely, yeah. spot on. <laughs>